Hi, welcome to part three of the TIFS course overview. In this video, we're going to explore the recovery phase of the program. The recovery phase has nine steps. The first step is to move from simultaneous incongruence to sequential incongruence. Basically what that means is to project the ego states out of ourselves into the room around us so that we can sort them out and work with them one at a time to begin to um, overcome conflict and create harmony. Uh, when we have simultaneous incongruence, all those parts of self are running around inside the mind and creating a commotion and conflict that's very hard to sort out. So once we move them out into the room and we have all the parts involved with a certain process out there, then we can have sequential incongruence. It's still incongruent, but at least it's sequential, sequential so that we have it sorted out and we can work with the parts that are involved. And incongruence, in other words, is conflict. And what we want to shoot for is a lack of conflict or harmony and integration. The second step of the recovery process is to develop rapport and trust with the parts that we've projected out into the room. To do that, we want to identify the function of each part and the type of each part. Let's say we found a critical part involved in a conflict. We want to know what the function of that critical part is. The function may be something like to motivate me. And then if its function is to motivate, we want to know what type of uh, criticism it uses to motivate us. Is it a harsh, abusive type of criticism? Or is it a taskmaster type of criticism? Or is it a nurturing kind of criticism? And and we need to find out there's various types of um, parts that are involved in these things. We also need to know about the um, principle of positive intention which simply states that every part of self lives in the same house and so they all have a positive intention for the personality as a whole. Even if you don't like what a part is doing, even if you don't authorize what a part is doing, that part has a, po a positive intention and it thinks it needs to perform its function on cue or that positive intention that will never be coming about. Now we have to remember that it's the the intention that we want to appreciate even if we don't appreciate the outcome. The strategy may not produce the positive intention. In fact it may produce something quite opposite of that. It may produce pain or something harmful. We must keep in mind that the part didn't intend to create the pain and the part was created in childhood and so the part is not a rocket scientist and we have to take it on faith that that part has a positive intention. It's kind of like the old adage of separating the child from the behavior, love the child, hate the behavior. We love the part and hate the, the behavior if the behavior is harmful. Um, in that way we can start to build rapport with the parts, at least appreciating they're trying to do something good. And once we've identified in uh, the function type and positive intention of each part, we want to begin to have them dialogue between themselves. And in doing so, we're creating integration because when one part of the, of the mind or the neural circuitry is communicating with another part of the neural circuitry, pathways are being opened up or developed or established. And dendrites are connecting to axons and, and neural, neural genesis or brain growth is a result of that and that connecting and communicating a dialogue between the parts can help uh, produce integration. And remember a fragmented self that's in conflict with each other is the nature of our problem. So we want a harmonious integrated self and this dialogue is critical for that. And also we want to develop rapport between the parts. We want them to gain an understanding and maybe even a working alliance, whereas in the past they didn't know each other and they were pulling in opposite directions. Perhaps even with the same positive deep purpose to produce happiness. And step three, once we've gained some trust and rapport with the various parts of self, now we want to gain permission to access the wounded part 
And what that means is wounded parts are usually suppressed or repressed deep down into the psyche and covered over with defense mechanisms. In this model of therapy, those defense mechanisms are referred frequently to as managing parts or guardian parts or protecting parts. But they all have a function, a type, and a positive intention. Um, the wounded parts carry the pain. The managing parts help manage the pain by performing a defensive function or maneuver in psychoanalytic terms. First thing we do to get that permission is identify and present unintended negative consequences related to that current strategy such as protection or perfection or approval seeking or people pleasing or any of the other um, dysfunctional patterns of behavior. We want to identify any negative consequences related to those strategies, which is not very difficult to do. All we need to do is to approach the intuitive, creative part of our mind and ask the simple question, what are three unintended negative consequences to perfectionism? We take those unintended negative consequences back to the guardian part or the protective part and we, uh, we gently offer those unintended consequences to the part and receive its response. And frequently they're frustrated because they don't know what to do other than what they've been doing. That's what they were created for. That's our job is to help them see that what they're doing is not helpful and help them find a new job or create a new job for them. So from the adult ego state, we reassure, reassure any concerned parts that the adult part of us can and will take over now. And we reassure any concerned parts that we won't get lost in the pain of that wounded part because we're going to help dissociate or disconnect ourselves from the pain while working to heal the pain at the same time. And we let the protective parts know that the wounded part will heal and that the old strategy of defense will no longer be necessary. Sometimes this triggers the fear in one of the defensive parts that it will no longer be necessary because the strategy is no longer necessary. In that case, we remind the managing parts that the role modification back to their original intended purpose is what we will be endeavoring to do and that they will still be needed because all parts of self can be helpful and have talents and abilities and are even necessary in many cases. Once we have permission to access that wounded part, then we go ahead and do so. We access the wounded part and ask it to contain all the feelings and separate from us so that we can help it heal. If it doesn't separate and we get engulfed with all that repressed pain, then it's hard to stay in our problem-solving part and help the part to go through the processes involved in healing. The next thing we do is also to be prepared in case um, we can't disconnect from a traumatic memory. And it's important to be prepared to do one or two degrees of visual or kinesthetic dissociation. In, in other words, to separate in two or three separate ways from that woundedness if it's unable to disconnect. If we don't do that, then we're going to run the risk of re-traumatizing a part of ourselves and having that much more work to do. So this if it can't be done in in um, in work with self-help or uh, with the tools that you do have then I would suggest you stop the process at this position right here and you reach out for help with a professional because to try and force this um, healing while being unable to disconnect with trauma is not the safest thing to do so we have to be sure that we can dissociate at least enough to be able to maintain the ability to work through our issues through these processes. So word of caution there. And then we also need to check for and work with any remaining concerned or objecting parts as we go through this process and do the same thing we did to get permission in step three. And then in step five, once we've accessed the wounded part and began working with it, then our main task is to develop, develop a trusting, empathetic, and safe environment for that wounded part. And as we do that, we have the wounded part uh, tell us its story. 
you know, it's probably it's usually a younger part of ourselves and uh, imprint ex in the imprint period maybe the first seven years of life or the modeling period the, the from eight to thirteen and maybe even the socialization period which is uh, adolescence but um, we have whatever parts are involved in the problem we're working on the wounded parts need to tell their story to someone who can witness their story not necessarily try to cheer them up or fix it but just to hear their story and be able to have compassion and empathy for that part so in that case the adult ego state or our true self may want to remain connected just enough to have some sense of what this part went through as it tells us our its story so we might reconnect for that purpose and that purpose alone uh, just to get a sense of what it's feeling and what it's been through and hopefully that part will see our compassion and empathy and be able to take that in we want to always monitor and check and see if the wounded part is actually taking in the compassion and the empathy because that's a healing uh, experience for the for the wounded part that's a good beginning to the healing process step six is all about healing uh, this has processes within processes here um, in step six once we've developed an, a safe environment with empathy and trust and the, the younger part of ourself the wounded part is is ready and able to go through the healing process then we want to select an imprint experience and re-imprint that so we, res we select an issue from our, the part story or from our self-preservation system. We have the wounded part take us back to the imprint experience through something called an affect bridge. And, we'll, and we want the wounded part to be able to go through a 12-step re-imprinting process, which we'll cover in another video. Uh, this will be a very powerful thing if everything we've done up to this point has been done correctly. And then after the re-imprinting process, and the new experience has a chance to settle we will repeat it with whenever desired in order to strengthen those results there and once we've done step six and done the re-imprinting then we move to step seven which is a process of retrieving that wounded part from the um, harmful or toxic environment moving it into a safe sanctuary that we create in the present moment prepare that part for the release of the emotional toxins and identify any necessary resources for healing and then within the sanctuary or safe place complete an emotional release process including infusion of healing resources into the spaces left by the release process and again the wounded part may have multiple issues we just try to um, work on a few issues at a time we negotiate with the managing parts to stay as neutral as possible in between sessions and let the adult take over rather than lapsing into those old behaviors while the healing process continues um, I don't want to minimize the power and the complexity of these emotional releases but for the time allotted in this video we're just going to cover that there is such an emotional release process and it's very powerful and then uh, once the emotional release has occurred um, then the parts that were protective defense mechanisms will need some time to readjust and be assigned new roles so we access any managing defense mechanisms ask if they're now aware of the wounded part and how it's now healed or healing if not we introduce the new healing wounded part to the manager and we ask the manager to uh, check and see if the old strategy is really no longer necessary if the managing part thinks says no it may still be necessary you ask the manager what the objections or concerns are and negotiate or reassure as needed and then we remind the manager of your adult resources and let it know you can handle things now and then we ask the managing part to visualize itself as if it no longer does that dysfunctional or unhelpful behavior and we help that manager or that defense mechanism to visualize itself doing its original intended purpose in several different contexts and we we can help teach that part through a process called a new behavior meditation process um, teach it the how to's of doing a healthy behavior that it was intended to do and we do this for every managing part involved in the issues that we're now working with 
as a result of the recovery process, uh, we will have created my self-actualization system. Remember, in the end of the assessment phase, we had the self-preservation system. Well, the self-actualization system is the growth mode, and this is what we want to have. So once we've completed a process, a recovery phase here, then in a journal, we make a list of the parts that were worked working with us in the process above. We record their new jobs, their new resources, their new beliefs.